Hi, my name is Greg Pallia. I'm with West Roofing Systems, and welcome to another edition of White Boy Roofing. In today's episode, we're going to compare the two most popular commercial roofing systems out there, TPO um, and spray foam, a direct comparison. We're going to get into the cost, problems, who's better than who, who's worse than who, etc. So we're going to go through these uh, one by one. Uh, the first thing is initial cost. Um, cost is everything. You want to get a roof as cheap as possible, but you don't want it to be too cheap to where you know, it doesn't perform how it needs to perform. Both of them are pretty similar in price. They're pretty much five to ten dollars per square foot, um, kind of across the board. There's a lot of, so it depends on what the existing roof is. Say if it's a humongous roof, it's just a lot of open area, not a lot of penetrations, not a lot of pipes, skylights, drains, etc. Um, TPO might be cheaper because you can just roll out a hundred foot long sheet fasten it in and you're kind of done. Um, spray foam, if there's um, a unique roof, a real busy roof, lots of different levels and stuff on the roof, like spray foam just ch -ch -ch right around. The material's a little bit more expensive for spray foam, but it really depends on the characteristics of the roof, what you're looking for, that really drives kind of one system over another in terms of initial costs. Um, second thing is, is cost allocation. You know, when you're getting a quote for $100,000, what is that being paid for? by a roof system. A TPO roof, typically 70% of that money is dedicated towards labor. The mat material is only 30%. The material is cheaper than spray foam. It takes a lot of guys to install it. It takes a lot of time to install uh, a rolled out sheet with a roof with a lot of penetrations on it. It just takes a lot of time. Spray foam is real simple. But on a spray foam roof, that 100 grand, 70 grand of it is dedicated towards the material on its own. Only 30% is dedicated towards labor doesn't take a lot of guys to install spray foam, but the material is expensive. And you know why is this important to a building owner? Well, if you spend a hundred grand, why would you want seventy percent of it to walk off the roof when their project's done? Wouldn't you rather have all that money dedicated in the materials that were on your roof, and they're going to stay on your roof for twenty years? So, huge difference in how the money is spent when you go with either roofing system. Next thing is uh, potential problems. You know both roofing systems have a ton of problems. TPO roofs. They're glorified, tar they're glorified tarps. They're rolled out. They're super thin. I think the max thickness is like 80 mils, and a mil is one one thousandth of an inch. So basically, it's eight percent, eight percent of one inch is the thickest TPO you can get. Very thin, you can get easily punctured. Um, you need to use fasteners, or they have seams on them. There's different ways to attach them, but basically, you have to attach them some way, and you can lose that adhesion pretty easily. Like I said before, the roof is exposed to elements 24-7. Um, you have freezing rain, super hot summers, uh, expansion and contraction. I mean, those seams can easily lose adhesion and break apart, and now you have a roof that's leaking. So that's kind of the issues with TPO. Um, some problems with spray foam has a lot of problems. The first and the worst one e easily is there's bad contractors out there. A lot of people want to get in the spray foam and install it. There's a lot of chemistry involved in spraying foam. There's the three energies, there's exothermic energy, there's environmental energy, and there's electrical energy. Those You have to be a master of all three of those to install a good foam. I mean, there's heating, there's pressures, there's changing based on the roof and how it is. You might spray foam in one area under direct sunlight, but later in the day, that same exact area is now under the shade. It's 30 degrees difference. You have to use a different speed of foam or lower the temperature of the gun, whatever it might be. But I don't know what I'm not the expert at, but the installers that have been doing it for 20, 30 years, they know that. And the people that don't do that and install a bad roofing system give spray foam a real bad name. You know, the owner will be like, yeah, this roof looks like crap, and spray foam, it sucks, it's not any good. Well, that's not true. It's the contractor who did that sucks and doesn't know what they're doing. Um, so make sure when you get out there and you're going to go the spray foam route, uh, pick someone that's been around for a long time, knows what they're doing. Another problem with spray foam is since it is kind of a mist that comes out, um, it's very lightweight. It can be easily carried on to cars, windows, you know, any undesirable assets. Um, it's just called overspray. You know, we combat that with windscreens and boots, but it's a problem that we have to incorporate that other systems don't have to do, uh, for sure. Um, let's get into some differences. The first one is spray foam is fluid applied. It's, uh, you know, the two materials are heated and mixed through a gun. It, through, the pipe goes up through your building. There's an installer on there, and he shoots it out, it's fluid applied. Um, and a TPO roof obviously is in sheets, and you roll them out and you fasten them to your roof. So huge difference in what they are, how they're installed, etc. cetera. Um, another difference is the insulation. Spray foam on its own is an insulation. 
it has closed cell properties. And what this means is if it's punctured, you know, say hail comes and punctures a little bit of it, and then it rains the next day. Water will just sit in that hole and not move. It will not travel down. The water might fill the hole up and just stay there, and then the water will keep going on top and flow towards the drain like it's supposed to. This is totally different from TPO roofs that have open cell insulation, like polyisoap word. Um, if there are, uh, ever is a puncture or a hole in it, the water gets into it, water will you know, saturate into it, expand, and cause a big roof repair. Um, I kind of like to use the example of a water dropper, eyedropper, and a paper towel. You can just drop water into the corner of a paper towel, you know, microscopic water entry point. The whole paper towel will be soaked after a while. That's exactly how it works with open cell insulation. Um, and so there's a big difference there. And the last thing is, what kind of warranties does each system have? Spray foam is typically 10 to 20 years, depending on the thickness of the coating that you want. So you can get a 20 year warranty, you know, if, you, if you'd like. Um, TPO, I've seen 30 year warranties, but you have to use, you know, the thickest type, the thickest type of TPO. You have to use certain types of fasteners. Um, there's a lot of extra premium parts, I believe, that you need to use to get that 30 year warranty, but that is, a, that is available. Um, and really that's it. That's mainly most of the differences there. If you want to learn more about any of these points here, just uh, click on the URL. It's in the description there to the full blog post. Um, but hopefully you took away at least one thing new today. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.